Hello again, thank you for watching this video. Now we will talk about chapter 4, frame relay part 2. Uh, frame relay is divided in part 1 and part 2. Hopefully, you watched part 1 very, very concentrated. Okay, now part 2 exam, uh, CCNA exam, semester 4, connecting network by me, Astrid Krasnichi. Okay, in this uh, part, part 2, we will talk uh, about solving reachability issues frame relay sub-interfaces, then point-to-point -point sub interfaces multi-point sub-interfaces, configuring point-to-point -point and point-to-multi-point sub-interfaces, paying for frame relay, verify frame relay, and demonstration configuring frame relay cloud and sub-interfaces in uh, Packet Tracer. Okay, solving reachability issues. Now, recall the split horizon is a technique used to prevent routing loops in a network using distance vector routing protocols. So, remember what did split horizon say? What, what was that rule? Split horizon updates reduce routing loops by preventing a routing update received on one interface to be forwarded out of the same interface. So, if one interface receives an update, routing update, it's not going to send it out at the same interface because it will send it out on the other interfaces every other interface but not where it came from so that's a split horizon rule now for example if router 1 sends an update to router 2 so update goes this way through the green line to router 2 now it's coming to this interface now router 2 the split horizon will block router 2 for sending that update out of the same interface towards router 3. Now that's a problem. That's going to be reachability issues because router 1 will never be able to communicate or to send any updates to router 3. So router 1 will send the updates to router 2, but router 2 is not going to send those updates to router 3. So routing updates for router 2 and for router 3. Our one has a multiple permanent virtual circuits on a single I physical interface. So the, so the split horizon rule prevents R1 from forwarding that routing updates through the same physical interface to other remote spokes like router 2. It's not R1, it's actually R2 in there. So if R2 receives an update from R1, it the split horizon will prevent it from sending it to R3. So some people might say, okay, well, great, let's disable the split horizon. S disabling split horizon might seem to be the simplest solution because it all allows routing updates to be forwarded out of the same physical interface from which they came from. Yeah, great, let's disable it. But there was a reason why it was there. So you can't just go and disable it. You know, let's get rid of it. I mean, you know, there was there's a reason why it's there. Only IP allows to disable split horizon. So not IPX in Apple Talk. They don't allow you to disable split horizon. It's always there. Disabling split horizon increases the chance of routing updates. So don't go out and just say, oh yeah, let's just disable it and it will fix the problem. Because you can create other problems, like routing loops. The next obvious solution to solve the split horizon problem is to use a full mesh topology. This is expensive because more PVCs are required. So Full mesh, yeah, that will fix the problem. We don't need any. We don't have any any problems with the split horizon, but it's a problem because we have to buy more virtual circuits. So that's not, still not good. So the preferred solution is to use the sub interfaces. You create a sub interface, and for every other destination, we will see how to create those sub interfaces. So frame relay sub interfaces. Now, if router two, if you create two sub interfaces sub interfaces are like virtual interfaces yeah so one sub interface for router 1 and one sub interface for router 3 so when router 1 co talks to router 2 it will connect to that sub interface and then it will send it to other interfaces it won't go out same sub interface but it will go out the second sub interface which is fine with the split horizon it will go out through to router 3 so frame relay can partition a physical interface into multiple virtual interfaces called sub interfaces. Frame relay sub interfaces can be configured in either point to point or multi point mode. 
So here, subinterface, uh, well, physical interface serial 0, 0, 0 can be created with the subinterface serial 0 forward slash 0 forward slash 0 dot 1. Now uh, it's usually for router 1. And dot 3, it will say for router 3. Now it says there for router 2, but it's actually for router 3. Now, in out there, well, people would use this dot instead of just putting 1, 2, 3, and so on. They will put like the Dulcie number. That doesn't mean it is a, it hadn't has not anything to do with the Dulcy number, but just to like a uh, uh, like say okay this sub interface is for this Dulcy and so on to make it easy to remember. So point to point sub interfaces, a single point to point sub interface establishes one PVC connection to another physical interface or sub interface on a remote router. So we can have a sub interface point to point. It will have established one connection, virtual circuit, to can be a physical connection or another sub interface. For example, if we create a point to point sub interface from router 2 to router 1, now this sub interface, point to point, can connect to if it was a, here a, a sub interface as well or a physical interface. In, the, in this case, each pair of the point to point routers has its own subnet and each point to point sub interface has a single DALSI. Routing updates traffic is not subject to split horizon rule. Multipoint sub interfaces. A single multipoint sub interface establishes multiple PVC connection to physical uh, multiple physical interfaces or sub interfaces on remote routers. All the participating interfaces are in the same subnet. In the multipoint sub interfaces, it's really good if you don't want to waste so many uh, IP addresses because remember as point-to-point -point sub interface it will just need two IP addresses one for your one side and the other one for the other side but from those two IP addresses you're gonna need you're gonna lose one address for network ID and you're gonna lose the last address for the broadcast so at every point-to-point -point sub interface you're losing two IP addresses while with multipoint no multipoint you only use two sub interfaces it lose two IP addresses per subnet and then the old subnet will be working on the one uh, uh, subnet, yeah. The subinterface acts like non-broadcast multi-access frame relay interface. So routing updates traffic is subject still to this split horizon rule. Configuring point-to-point -point and point-to-multipoint subinterfaces. So if you configure a point-to-point subinterface, you just go to the interface and say interface serial 0 forward slash 0 forward slash 0 dot 103 so this is for Dulcie 103 and it's point to point that one tells the sub interface number this number can be in the range from 1 to 4 billion and something the interface number that precedes the period must match the physical interface number to which the sub interface belongs so here for example is creating one sub interface in serial 000 dot 103 now this 103 it's a, it's just a number it, does, it has no meaning whatsoever you can use anything for in this range what what people what uh, administrators will use is the dulci number so you will kind of like a uh, map it to the dulci they will know they will for for easy to remember okay they will say i made this sub interface for dulci 103 and we have a point to point select this in order uh, for each pair of point to point routers to have its own subnet point to point links normally use the subnet mask of slash 30 now point to multi point point to multi point so that shouldn't be there that point to point point to multi point say so interface serial 0, 0, 0, dot 103 in the side and we have a multi point now select this if all the routers exist in the same subnet frame relay interface dulci 103 then we have to say the dulci number so we here we are mapping the dulci number to each sub interface defines a local dulci number being linked to the sub interface this is the only way to link the lmi derived dulci to sub interface because lmi does not know about sub interfaces paying for frame relay we have an access rate or port speed and committed information rate now access rate is the rate at which your access circuit joins the frame relay network these are typically at 56 kilobytes per second 
T1 1.536 MB of fractional T1s. Force speed are clocked on the frame relay switch to I our ISP. It is not possible to send data at higher than the port speed. Committed information rate is negotiation between you and a service provider. The CIR is the amount of data that the network receives from the access circuit. The server provider guarantees that the customer can send data at the CIR. All frames received at or below the CIR are still accepted. Then we have an open subscription. Server providers sometimes sell more capacity than they have on the assumption that not everyone will demand the entitled, uh, entitled capacity all of the time. This is similar again to the uh, air carriers. Uh, they, will sell, they will sell more tickets than they have seats in the airplane, thinking or hoping that somebody will miss the aer airplane and then it's fine for them. They just made more money. Same thing with the service providers. They will sell more, uh, band more like a, um, they will sell more uh, frame relay uh, access rate for for the customers. Thinking that then not everybody's going to be online at the same time. Because of this oversubscription, there will be instances when the sum of CIR from multiple PVCs to a given location is higher than the port or access channel rate. This can cause traffic issues such as congestion and dropped traffic. Bursting, committed burst information rate, CBIR. A great advantage of frame relay is that the network capacity that is being unused is made available or shared with all customers, usually at no extra charge. The CBIR is a negotiated rate above the CIR, which is the customer can use to transmit for short bursts. Now these bursts, they have to be very short in less than three or four seconds. You can send more data than you're actually paying for. To verify a frame relay, we did, um, in part one, we did a connect command. We say show interface 0, 0, 04 slash 0, 04 slash 0. This show interface command displays how the encapsulation is set up what encapsulation we're using, along with the usual layer 1 and layer 2 status information, including LMI type, LMI DALSI, frame relay DTE or DCE type. So when we do this command, show interface serial 000, we see information about layer 1. Serial 0, 4 slash 0, 4 slash 0 is up. That's layer 1 information there. Line protocol is up. That's layer 2 information there. So we can see that layer 1 and layer 2 is working great there's no problem there we have encapsulation frame relay okay that's good keep alive set 10 seconds the LMIs between you customer customer and the, and the frame relay switch or internet service provider can be a uh, keep alive is set at 10 seconds these LMIs are being exchanged every 10 seconds LMI type we are using Cisco well hopefully the other side is using Cisco otherwise there's no communication LMI DELSI 1023 is the DELSI, frame relay is DTE. So LMI type, Cisco, LMI DELSI, and the type, the frame relay type. The next command, show frame relay LMI. This helps isolate the problem to frame relay communication issue between the carrier switch and your router. Look for non-zero invalid items. Okay, so when we do show frame relay LMI, we should see everything that says invalid, we should see a zero. If we see it something else that other than zero, we have a problem. Now, we can see the LMI type and here we have a Cisco as well. So that's good. And number status inquiries send 76, number status messages received is 76 as well. So that's good as well. We have a we have a, a status inquiry sent 76 and we have received 76 replies. So this should be increasing every 10 seconds or so. LMI statistics. Then we have a show frame delay PVC interface uh, and then DELSI. This command is also also useful for viewing the number of backend and backend packets receiving received by the router. The PVC status can be active, inactive, or deleted. So, show frame relay PVC 102. 
we can see the status active or deleted inactive and then the status of the of the uh, congestion we can see the discard eligible packets if there's any as well show frame relay map this will show you the PVC status and um, what are you mapping? What's Dulce you are mapping? For example, here we see the Dulce 100 is being mapped to this destination IP address 10.140.11 and protocol is IP. Dynamic is learned this dynamically through inverse ARP. It's broadcast as well. It's got a broadcast. And the status is active. And as well, that we're using Cisco LMI. Okay, on this demonstration now, we'll show you how to create the cloud. A frame relay cloud and packet tracer and how to configure a frame relay sub interfaces okay so now I'm gonna close this I'm gonna start a new one so file new I'm not gonna save this next okay now we have the cloud is down here wide area network emulation so click on that generate cloud bring one cloud on the network okay here I can just rename this cloud and just put FR or frame relay. Now we don't really need to configure this as a because we are not starting for for ISP. This is this is will be done by ISP anyway. But in the packet tracer, we have to learn how to do it if we want to test uh, some of these configuration. So we got a frame relay. We can have one router that's going to connect a router, uh, say uh, router one, router two, and router three. Router two will have a connection to router one and router 3, so two uh, sub-interfaces on router uh, 2. Okay, so this is the configuration what we will have. Uh, let's new here as well. No, I don't want to say that. Okay, so on the frame relay there will be a connection on serial serial 1, it will be uh, router 1 router 1 and Let's have these copy these stuff, and we will have serial two. That will be router two, serial three, and it will be router three connected to it. In serial one, we will say uh, for router one uh, to go to uh, router two, so from R one, R one, to R two, R two, because it's going to use a DLC one or two. Okay, and from router 3 to router 2 is going to use the DLC uh, 3 or 2. So router 3 going to the destination R2 is going to use 3 or 2. From router 2, it's going to be connected on serial 2. Now, this one will have um, two uh, sub interfaces or two DLCs. So from router 2 to uh, router 1. We will use DLC 201 and from router 2 to router 3, the DLC will be 2 or 3. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. From router 1 to router 2, the DLC 1 or 2. From router 2 to router 1, the DLC is 2 or 1. Now we can have another DLC here from router 2 to router 3, 2 or 3, and from router 3 to router 2, 3 or 2. So there will be a connection going that way and another connection going that way here on the top we will have router 2 so I'm just gonna add that okay this is gonna be router 2 router 2 then I'm gonna add a new router this one is gonna be router 1 yep yeah, that's great and here this is going to be router 3. Okay, so router 2, router 2 and 1 is going to be connected and then 2 and 3 as well. So if 1 wants to send some data to 3, it has to go through router 2. And router 2 will have two sub interfaces here. Okay, so we're going to still configure the cloud. So go to the cloud and now I'm going to put this on the side here. Get the notepad. Okay. Okay, here we go. That's it. Go to the configuration mode. 
Now we will say on the interface 1, serial 1, serial 1, it will be for router 1 and DALSI, DALSI 1 or 2, so DALSI 1 or 2, from R1, R1 to R2. Now this is just a name, yeah. So there's, it's gonna, no, it doesn't have any. Uh, it's, it's, it will make it just like easy to know what you're doing. It's just a name. So this is the important one. Dulcie one or two. It's going from root one to root two, and LMI type that we're using is Cisco. That's the default. We can use ANSI or Q933A. This they have to match between the service provider and the uh, cust CPE customer premises equipment. So add that. So one or two, R one to R two, and this is serial one. So if I go to serial two, this is for router two. So I'm going to have two deltas. So one of them is going to be two or one, and the name is going to be R two. This is going to R one. And again, LMI Cisco add, and I'm going to add another delta. This is going to be two or three. And the name is going to be from R2 to R3. Add that. So now I'm going to go to uh, serial 3. This is for router 3. So it's going to be, the DLC is going to be 3 or 2. And the name from R3 to R2. Add that as well. Add it. Yep, done. Now, now the connection. So we're going to have the connection here. So after we did this, we have to go to frame relay and say serial 1 or 1 to R2 is going to connect with serial 2 so we're making the link now from two R2 to R1 that one of them another connection is going to be serial 3 or 3 to R2 is going to connect the serial 2 but this time R2 to R3 add that okay so that's our cloud done we made serial 1 for router 1 and that was from R1 to R2 with the DELSI 1 and 2 which we have there in serial 2 we have for R2 the 2 DELSI 201 from R2 to R1 203 from R2 to R3 and the same we did for R3 on serial 3 the DELSI 3 or 2 from R3 to R2 frame relay we joined those links so we made serial 1 link with the serial 2 but because serial 2 had two links we have to choose the right one. So R1 to R2 is connecting with R2 to R1. And then serial 3 is choosing with the serial 2 again with the correct link R2 to R3. Done. Okay, so that was your, your um, cloud configuration on the packet tracer. Now I'm going to connect these routers together. So these ones are going to connect with the serial interface. So first of all, these routers, they don't have a serial interface. So I have to populate these interfaces. So first I have to switch the router off, then uh, drag one VIC 1T on the right here and switch it back on. I will do the same for R2 and R3. So I'll go to R2, switch it off, drag 1T, switch it back on. And do the same for R3, switch it off, one VIC 1T and switch it back on. Okay, so now I can connect them. Connect them, I will choose the uh, connections here, and then I'll choose the uh, serial DCE. DCE, where do you think I'll have to connect it? Here or here? So, where should I go? Okay, so DCE, it's always the ISP. You're not, as a customer, going to provide the clocking. So, ISP, this is serial 1, it's going to connect to router 1, serial 000. zero, zero. Okay, another connection, DCE now, serial 2, it's going to go to the router 2. And then again another connection, serial 3, it's going to go to serial 3, a uh, serial 000 of router 3. Okay, excellent. Now we do some configuration. Now this is a bare uh, routers, they don't have any configuration, I just dragged them there. So by default, I will do the startup configuration. Now, hopefully this is not gonna take, like, extend the video, but I'll do it very quickly, as quick as I can. These commands, you should know them by now. Enable, 
config t uh, hostname. I'll leave this. I will add it later. No IP main lookup service password encryption uh, enable password Cisco enable secret class then I'll do the console line console zero password Cisco login <coughs> Login, login, sync, exec, timeout, zero, zero, line, pty, zero to four, password, Cisco, login, uh, login, banner, MOTD, and authorize users. Okay. It's getting late now. Okay, let's see. Uh, enable config T hostname, no IP domain lookup, service password encryption, enable password Cisco, enable secret class, line console zero, password. Yeah, all seem fine. Authorized, uh, users only. Okay, so here now I'll change this is for R1. So I'll copy and paste that to R1. And no here. Paste. Excellent. No problems there. Okay. Go back to the notepad. Change this to for R2. Highlight all of it. Right click. Copy. Go to R2. Paste it in there. So I'm just going to drag this to this side. No here. Paste. And then I'll change the name, the host name, and make it R3 and copy and paste for R3. I'll do L3 in the middle here. No. And paste. Okay, we're done. This the um, uh, good housekeeping it's called. Alright, um now the configuration we're gonna do a network uh, this is gonna be 10.1.12.0 forward slash 24 okay and this network here is going to have 10.1.23.0 forward slash 24 okay so I'm going to start configuring router 1 first so I'll go to router 1 R1 First interface, zero all zeros, encapsulation frame relay. Okay, that was a required command, first command. Then say IP address, 10.1.12.1, 24 24. And then we have to map it, so frame, relay map what protocol is IP what is the destination so it's going to be 10.1.12.2 and what dulcy do we say we're going to use so it's got one or two and broadcast excellent R1 done so we're going to go to R2 sorry. first here we're going to say interface serial all zeros encapsulation frame relay and then well just need to do no shut down there otherwise it won't work so no shut down no shut down lost again here I will do the no shut down later so interface zero 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 uh, zero zero dot 
Now here you can choose any number from 1 to 4 billion. Now I'm going to choose uh, 201 since it's going to match with the Delta number. 201 and then point to point. So I'm creating a sub interface with a dot 201 and this is point to point. Here I'll put for an IP address, IP address 10.1.12.2 and then I will put, I will link the Dulce to this sub interface. So frame relay interface Dulce. This is going to be 201. So I'm linking the Dulce number to this sub interface because Dulce doesn't understand the sub interface. Okay, so I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to do the same similar configuration for 301 towards root of 3. So serial 000, 000 dot 301 point to point IP address 10.1.1.10.1.23 here dot 2 and frame relay interface Dulce 203. Okay, excellent. That's for root 2 is done. So root 3, the configuration interface interface. Okay, I said I'm gonna do the not shutdown. So for that, I'll have to go interface. Zero all zeros, no shut down. Okay. Interface serial zero 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 encapsulation frame relay and then IP address ten dot one dot twenty three dot three slash twenty four and we're going to map here frame relay map IP 10.1.23.2 to what does it? 302 and broadcast. No shutdown. Okay. Now, here is all configuration is here. Now, interface serial 000 encapsulation frame relay um, IP address, the IP address, that's a mapping not shut down. You can see when we're doing um, for example sub interfaces we don't do have to do the mapping. The mapping will happen we link the Dulce to the sub interface. But when we do it like a physical interfaces then we have to do the mapping. So I'm going to highlight all of this for router 1, copy of the router 1, paste it there. Okay and I'm going to highlight all of the other bits for root 2, copy, cause root 2, paste it. Okay, I don't see any errors there. Excellent. I'm going to highlight the stuff for root 3 and paste it to root 3. Excellent. Now, if I go to root 1, I say do show, show interface brief, IP interface brief. Okay, so here, layer 1 is up, layer 2 is up. It doesn't mean that we have a connection between two branches. It just means like from us to the ISP, it's working. Layer 1 and layer 2. Layer 3 is to the branch. So we can say to end here, show frame, frame relay. What is the command? So we have LMI and the packet tracer. These are the only three. LMI, map, PVC. So show frame relay, map. Okay, so we have mapped IP protocol to this destination address with the DLC 102 statically and conf uh, the LMI we're using is Cisco and at the moment the status is active. Okay, the next uh, show frame relay LMI. All invalids are zero, that's good. The request that we send is 20, we received 19. One should be very quickly, very soon coming. And the last one is PVC here. On the PVC, yeah, I'll make some space and run the command again. Um, status is acti active. Um, Delta scene one or two, and there's nothing. There's no problems uh, at all. Okay, so we can try and ping that uh, other interface. So ping. Uh, 
10.1.102, sorry, 10.1.12.2. Oops, too many toss there. Yep, we got reply. Everything is working great. So we go to root of three as well. Let's check this commands. So end. Show IP interface brief. Let's expand this a little bit. Yep, layer one and layer two is working. So show frame relay LMI. Yep, no errors there. Uh, PVC. Are we using 302? Active the status and show frame relay map. Again, we have a static map, Cisco, LMI, and we map in this protocol to this destination IP address. So let's ping that destination. So ping 10.1.23.2. Yeah, we have a reply. I'm pretty sure if we did router 1 and router 2, router 1 and router 3, they are going to router 2, and the router 2 should have a link back. We can go and test that. So first command, and here, show IP interface brief. Okay, these two sub interfaces are both up, and they both are working. Excellent. So show frame map. Yep, we have two point-to-point -point LCs, 201 and 203, they're both up. Show frame relay LMI. Yep, these are LMIs available for us. So we can see we have if we have three, we have one for the physical interfaces and then two sub-interfaces. Okay, and uh, PVC. Here we have two PVCs. Permanent version circuits 201 and 203, and they're both active. Okay, excellent. Now, the connection there is a connection between them. So, if I go to ping uh, 10.1.12.1, there's a reply, and ping.23.3, there's a reply there as well. All right, uh, what we have covered in this uh, module, you just saw how to configure the cloud. That's quite useful. And how to configure a frame relay uh, sub interfaces. Now, what we covered here, so let's go through this one. We covered the uh, reachability issues, the split horizon, what's causing law problems. Well, it does cause law problems into frame relay network. We can disable it, just do it thinking like we could create a loop or we can just create the sub-interfaces if we create a point-to-point -point sub interface for example we have to purchase more IP addresses and so on multi-point sub interfaces again have less IP addresses to purchase but again we have a problem with the uh, split horizon configuring point-to-point -point and point to multi point sub interfaces we saw what we have to do uh, paying for frame relay committed information rate what you decide with your internet service provider to verify frame relay we did in demonstration quite a few verification okay thank you very much for being with me uh, this has been Astrid Krasnichi we talked about uh, frame relay part 2 and this is uh, in the semester 4 connecting networks CCNA thank you very much have a good night we'll see you next video